as I said in the other videos, we were going to separate the World Wide Web into a separate video. Well, here we are. We're going to take a look at the World Wide Web and explain it in a little more detail as far as what it is as well as what it's not. First, a little bit of context here. The World Wide Web is credited to a gentleman by the name of Sir Tim Bernard-Lee. He released a proposal back in 1989 that would eventually become the World Wide Web. In 1990, he collaborated with another doctor, another gentleman, and they published a follow-up paper proposing that the new service would be known as the World Wide Web. It was officially born on August 6th, 1991. Again, appreciate this. I know I've said that a lot as we've talked about technology, but I think we tend to gloss over how big some of these things are. This thing was born, the World Wide Web was born in 1991, and look at what it has become in a relatively short period of time as far as other inventions. I mean, this is just amazing where we have come with the World Wide Web in such a short period of time. Now, the World Wide Web is not the internet. We've talked about the internet and we've talked about different protocols. For example, we talked about how mail is sent and received. We talked about FTP. We talked about Telnet. Those are all parts of the internet. A lot of people associate the World Wide Web and the internet being the same thing. And again, that's not correct. As I've said in other videos, however, just because you have this knowledge doesn't mean if you share this knowledge, you won't get a wedgie or your lunch money stolen. But for most people, the World Wide Web and the Internet are synonyms. They mean the same thing. For our purposes, they're not. The Internet is a collection of different services, of different protocols. The World Wide Web is a part of the Internet. Now, granted, it's probably the most well-known part of the Internet, but it's part of the Internet. It's not just the whole internet altogether. The World Wide Web provides a nice, friendly, graphical face for the internet. It was the World Wide Web and the graphic nature that the World Wide Web allows us that really made it catch on. It's kind of like how computers were working before we had a graphic user interface. Yes, they were there, people used them, but it wasn't until a graphic user interface that operating systems and computers really caught on. Same thing with the internet. It wasn't until the World Wide Web provided a place where you could see images, see different colors, see videos, listen to music, listen to uh, different audio things, that the internet really exploded. The World Wide Web is a set of standards on the internet. It allows us to publish videos, images, audio files, documents. They're all linked together. And the key for the World Wide Web is things called hyperlinks. Now, you might hear these things just called links. Not to be confused, of course, with Zelda. Um, but links are hyperlinks. They are linking from one thing to another thing, and thus the web is created. So if I had to sum up what the World Wide Web was, the World Wide Web is a graphic, visual, audio experience that links to different files, different documents, different audio files. That would be what the World Wide Web would be. There are some terms that we need to know in order to understand more about the World Wide Web. We have something called Hypertext Transport Protocol. We have HTTP over Secure Socket Layer. We have something known as Uniform Resource Locator. We have something called the Dynamic Name Server, and we have something called the Hypertext Markup Language. You know what all these are, by the way. Even if you don't know what these are, you know what they all are because you use them pretty much daily if you're online. So let's begin by talking about that first one, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. You might have known it as HTTP. This is the most common protocol that provides structure for the World Wide Web. What does this mean? Before I started shooting this video, my oldest son, who's nine years old, looked at it. He goes, oh, HTTP, and he basically read me what's on the slide, and I said, what does that mean? And he was kind of like, oh, it says here. Yes, but what does it mean? So what does hypertext transfer protocol mean? What does the most common protocol that provides structure for the World Wide Web mean? It means that it gives a set of rules on how things are supposed to be written for the web. It provides a structure for how the World Wide Web works. 
If you were to play a game, for example, if you were to play a board game, you couldn't have somebody playing Monopoly and someone else playing Shoots and Ladders and somebody else playing Memory and somebody else playing Clue and somebody else playing Risk. You have to agree to a set of rules on how the game is supposed to work. Now, if we look at Monopoly, we have a set of rules on how Monopoly is supposed to work. Under those rules, we have regular Monopoly, we have Lord of the Rings Monopoly, we have Star Wars Monopoly, we have different university monopolies, we have a whole bunch of different things, but the rule, the framework has been established. You have a board, you have dice, you have properties, you have little miniature things, uh, figurines that you move around the board. The rules on how Monopoly is played are the protocols. So HTTP is the rules, the protocols of how the internet, or excuse me, ooh, I made that mistake, how the World Wide Web is supposed to work. HTTP provides no encryption, meaning it doesn't provide any security. It doesn't uh, jumble up what you're sending so that when people look at it, they don't know what you're saying. So that's what encryption is in a nutshell. It jumbles up the words so you can decrypt it here and decrypt it here. Now, HTTPS is a secured socket layer. What happens with HTTPS is you have encrypted the information. As I was editing this video, I noticed it was going pretty long. In fact, we were going over the 15 minute mark with authority. We were actually getting up to the 18 minute, 19 minute, 20 minute mark. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this topic into two parts. This will be the end of part one. Come back for part two when we'll take a look at URLs, DNSs, and HTML. So we'll see you for part two.